Hello, welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy. We're going to continue a discussion about the upper extremity and talk about collateral circulation. Now, some of you may not need to fully understand collateral circulation, and if that's the case, you can probably skip the next couple of videos. Understanding collateral circulation, though, is critical for physicians, especially if they're surgeons or trauma doctors, and can be useful to most of you studying anatomy just to fully understand what's going on in the body. It would be useful to identify what we mean by collateral circulation. Collateral circulation simply refers to alternative routes that blood can take to a specific location if the primary route is somehow blocked. It may be occluded, as in a blood clot that blocks an artery. Uh, it can be tied off, it can be pinched, uh, it can be partially occluded. Collateral routes therefore provide a path when blood supply is shut off. Now, when the blood supply is blocked off, the collateral routes, the alternative routes, will not be nearly as large or as capable of carrying as much blood as the primary route. But they will generally provide enough blood to keep the tissue alive so that if, if for example, it was going to an arm and you're looking for collateral supply in the arm, uh, say the brachial artery is blocked off, you would find that the individual would be very weak in with their hand and wrist uh, and they would fatigue very quickly because they're not getting as much blood but the tissue will stay alive and since the collateral routes are much smaller vessels what happens is that when they're pressed into service they dilate over time not immediately, it takes time, but they do dilate to restore the full flow of blood to the area. Collateral circulation is important just in everyday living because blood vessels may be infarcted. They may have a clot plug them up and if that's the case the tissue supplied by that blood vessel would die. Collateral circulation gives a way to keep that tissue alive. Now the general rule is the body has robust collateral circulation. 
but there are some arteries that are the sole supply to tissue. If there is no collateral route, if an artery is the only artery going to the tissue, it is called an end artery. Fortunately, end arteries are rare. Unfortunately, we find them in vital organs. The brain has numerous end arteries, the heart, and the kidney. This is why, for example, when a coronary artery, an artery of the heart, is blocked off, then heart muscle dies. That's called a heart attack. Technical term is a myocardial infarction, an infarction of a blood vessel that is an end artery. We get similar things in the brain with the ischemic type of stroke. And in the kidney, we have end arteries that, re when they are infarcted, result in damage to the kidney. And if there's excess excessive damage to the kidney, then the kidney will fail entirely. So now let's look at some of the collateral routes in the upper extremity. And we'll start by looking at collateral routes around the scapula. In this slide, we're looking at a posterior view of the scapula and part of the humerus. And we see the humerus in the attached at the glenoid fossa, articulating at the glenoid fossa. Uh, I haven't drawn in the clavicle because it's not critical to what we're looking at here. Uh, I want to start with an artery called the suprascapular artery. And the suprascapular artery comes through that notch in the superior border of the scapula. And it wraps between the um, spine and the glenoid come down here in the infraspinous fossa. And the suprascapular artery, and I'll put a label in, And we'll put a line here just to make sure the label is going to the right place. The suprascapular artery gives off a branch into the supraspinous fossa. And it also gives off branches over to the acromion. Now, there's another large artery, the dorsal scapular artery, that comes in along the medial border of the scapula, like so, down to the inferior angle. And then 
we have an axillary artery changing into a brachial artery right here and we have branching off the axillary artery a subscapular artery which runs along the lateral border of the scapula like so and it comes down here and meets the dorsal scapular artery. So let me get some labels in here before I get too far along. The dorsal scapular artery here dorsal scapular artery remember is a branch of subclavian And the suprascapular artery is a branch of axillary. And then we have the axillary artery. I'm going to move the label up out of the way because keep it out of way of a artery I'm going to have to draw in here but we'll put a line over to the axillary this would be the terminal part of the axillary and the subscapular artery subscapular artery which is here and the subscapular is also a branch of axillary
then to be complete And a label to the brachial artery. Here. Now, the suprascapular artery. Connects with the subscapular artery. Here. And these arteries give off branches into the infraspinous fossa. Like so. The dorsal scapular artery also gives off branches into the supraspinous and infraspinous fossae. And the dorsal scapular branches meet up with the subscapular and suprascapular branches so that they're connected across the scapula in the supraspinous fossa and in the infraspinous fossa. So this provides a connection between subclavian and axillary. So for example, if the axillary was blocked, blood could come through the dorsal scapular through these connecting arteries over here and then flow backwards into the axillary and get blood to the axillary artery. We have some more redundancy here in that the intercostal arteries running in between the ribs give off branches that connect to the dorsal scapular artery. So branches from the intercostal arteries connect to dorsal scapular. So this is a way to provide another collateral route both to subclavian or to axillary coming from the intercostal arteries which branch directly from the aorta. So we'll draw those in. And also notice that the dorsal scapular artery and the subscapular arteries anastomose around the inferior angle of the scapula. So there's a direct connection right here. So we have connections across the scapula like so and around the inferior angle. Now, recall that we have branching from the axillary artery a pair of arteries that wrap around the surgical neck of the humerus. We have the posterior circumflex humeral and it connects with the anterior circumflex humeral. 
So we'll put a label in here. Posterior. Circumflex. Humeral. And we'll put a line into it. And put a reminder that this is also from the axillary. Now the posterior circumflex humeral, recall, has an ascending branch an ascending branch which ascends up here to the region of the acromion and it also has a descending branch that descends down into the humerus. That descends down into the arm. And finally, we have another artery from the axillary artery, and that is the thoracochromial artery. And the thoracochromial artery gives off an acromial branch, which also comes up here into the region of the acromion. So this is from thoracochromial, and let me put in a little bit of thoracochromial here. And the thoracochromial artery, we're just showing a little stub of it. Here. But what we're particularly interested in is the acromial branch. And thoracochromial also is a branch of axillary. Now, all these branches going to the acromion interconnect. Uh, they don't end-to-end -end anastomose like branches of suprascapular and branches of dorsal scapular. But they do all interconnect up here. And I want to indicate that with, with a circle. Just to show you that they 
all interconnect on the acromion. So blood can get from the acromion down to the posterior circumflex humeral and then to the axillary and brachial. We can get blood from dorsal scapula from the subclavian artery over to the subscapular and then to axillary. We can get blood from the intercostals to the dorsal scapular which can either go to the subclavian if it's needed there or if the blockage is further down on the axillary get into the axillary and feed back. The important thing to remember is that with arteries blood can flow either direction there are no valves so if there's a lack of blood here blood will flow backwards to fill up that space and help provide a blood supply to the distal tissues. So these are the collateral routes around the scapula. In the next video, we'll talk about collateral routes around the humerus, around the elbow, and finally in the hand. Thank you for your attention.